Well, my name's Sue Shardlow. I'm one of the co-organisers here at Ladies of Code London. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're aware that you have a lot of choice in, uh, in online events to attend at the moment, especially now because you don't have to be in the same country. So thanks again for joining us. Tonight, um, I am hosting the event and I've got my co-organiser, Sarah Usher, here with me. Give us a wave, Sarah. In case you haven't attended one of our events before, this is the second in our Get Into series. The Get Into series is all about demystifying roles in the tech industry because um, there are just so many now and how do you keep track? Sometimes you just need somebody in that role to tell you exactly what's involved and how you get into those roles. So we've got a special guest for you tonight who is a front-end web developer, but before I introduce her, I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping. So I've already mentioned the code of conduct. Um, hopefully you know where the toilets and fire escapes are because I cannot help you with that, I'm afraid. So I'm going to introduce our guest tonight. So Neve McCooey is a copywriter turned coder. She's currently a front-end web developer at Digital Products Agency Elsewhen. Neve is here tonight, like I said before, to tell us all about her career change to web developer. Now, I am personally really excited about this because when we thought about this series and we were like, okay, who can we bring on to talk about their roles? And I'm like, okay, I'm a web developer, um, so I should know loads of web developers. But actually, Neve was my first choice. And the reason why Neve was my first choice is because I personally do not know a lot of web developers who taught themselves how to code. So most of the ones I know were either on boot camp with me or they've got computer science degrees. And what I really wanted was to show a different route because I know that um, there are a lot of folks I do actually know who are teaching themselves who aren't working as web developers yet. Um, and I thought this might just give them another perspective or somebody that they can relate to a bit more than the people who went down the, the purely the education route. And also, um, you know, there are a lot of ways and a lot of options for getting into web development, but not everybody has access to all of those options and maybe some of those options are not necessarily suited to everybody. So this is why I'm really excited that uh, I got my first choice of speaker. I asked Neve and she immediately said yes. So welcome Neve. Hello, thank you for that lovely introduction. Hello Hi. everybody. <laughs> it's so nice to see everyone. I <laughs> like it that you said uh, socialising is in such short supply so this is actually really nice. It's just feel the same. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We're all over the place. Like I said, so Alex, I know uh, I met Alex at the weekend on one of our other meetups. She's, uh, don't let the accent fool you. If you ever speak to her, she's in France. <laughs> 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 Bhavna, I met, I didn't meet in Canada. Bhavna jumped on me at a conference last year, totally out of the play. Said, I really wanted to meet you. I knew you were going to meet her. I'm like, oh, who's this man? Yeah, so she's <laughs> Canada and it was a conference in London so it's so nice to see people yeah not everybody I think me and Sarah might be in the minority actually for being in London here so uh, so yeah welcome thank you for joining us what I want to do first is set the scene for everybody so I mentioned that you had taught yourself to code and now you're a front-end developer at a digital product agency so tell us what that actually involves what that actually involves, my current job, basically. Yeah. Um, well, so, so I am a junior front-end developer now. Uh, this is my second official job um, as a developer. Um, and what it involves, essentially, is coding all day. <laughs> so that's good. Um, and as you mentioned, so it's a, it's a digital product agency. So they have a lot of like client projects that they work on. Um, and everyone's split up into different teams um, throughout the day. And one of the great things that I get to do as a junior that I started off doing was just working on the company website um, as a basically a kind of training ground. Um, and I'm working mostly with uh, JavaScript and React, which is awesome. So every day I'm basically either fixing bugs to do with the website um, or I'm building new pages to add on or, you know, adding up new any new content basically that needs to go on the website, training up eventually to hit um, to branch out into working with uh, some of the client projects. So that's essentially what I do every single day. <laughs> cool. So, uh, what kind of products does your agency produce for its clients? Uh, a range of different things, I think. So they do. Um, they build websites for clients. Um, they have built apps uh, as well. 
Um, they're probably the main two things. I also do uh, sometimes a bit of research for projects. So if a client comes in and they say, you know, we have this particular problem, we're not sure how to solve it. Um, our agency, my agency will come in and basically conduct some research. Maybe it'll be conducting interviews with the users, doing a bit of UX, stuff like that, um, and then deliver a prototype, some solutions for them. And then oftentimes, I think that'll happen pretty regularly is that the company will then say, that sounds great. We'll commission you for another uh, project where you actually build it and deliver it. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the technologies that you're using later. But first, I want to know, when did you actually start learning how to code? When did I start learning how to code? I think it has been over, definitely over a year now. I think it's nearly two years, I think. I think it was about August, summer 2018. So yeah. about a year and a half, maybe two years now. Um, uh, yeah. And how long did it then take you between sort of first opening the text editor, approximately? and getting your first job. I think people would be really interested to know that. Uh, it was seven months. I was counting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I knew that because I've read your blog, but I think a lot of people won't know that and they'll be very surprised. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly explore your journey from never coding to becoming a professional coder and being in your second job. So yeah, I just want everyone to kind of bear in mind Neve learn in seven months and we're going to explore how she did that. So let's think a bit about like how you discovered and learned about web development. So you used to be a copywriter. Mm -hmm. How much code had you written before you decided to make the change? Zero. <laughs> you literally had never opened a text editor. Not on my life, no way. <laughs> had you ever gone, this is what I used to do in the 90s, right click, view source? Uh, I don't think I even had. No, All right, okay. I didn't have a clue. Okay, because what I want people to kind of understand is you are not somebody who, uh, who's just saying they never coded and they had done a bit, they'd made a few websites in, I don't know, some Dreamweaver or something, um, and they had made sites. So, yeah, so me genuinely had not coded before. Mm -hmm. So how yeah. did you, so in terms of like coding, because there's all different types of coding, all different flavours, how did you know that web development was the flavour of coding? that you wanted to get into? Um, that's a good question. I think, I mean, I was working as a copywriter when I first kind of came across the whole idea of it. Um, and I think with web development, I was always drawn to um, anything that you can visualize. Uh, I had studied art before I got into copywriting. So I was always super into like design and anything visual. Um, so I always felt like, a really nicely designed website was always just fun to look at. You know, you can figure out, um, and you can kind of see what you're actually doing. Whereas, of course, with some back end stuff, it's a lot more kind of abstract. Um, so, I think for me at the beginning and still, it's it's always just nice and helpful for me to be able to track my progress to actually see something, some sort of effect that your your coding is having. So that was really helpful and still is. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, because sometimes you don't know if it's working, let alone why it doesn't work. Yeah, totally. <laughs> You've got a visual clue, that does help. So mm. if, you didn't, if you'd never written a line of code before and you kind of thought, okay, I like this visual thing, web development is the thing I think I want to do, how much did you know about the building blocks of the web? So like HTML, CSS, did you even know that's what the building blocks of the web were? Or I had heard of HTML. Um, I didn't actually know that it was web specific. Uh, and same for CSS. And JavaScript, I had no idea what that was. Um, okay. So they were all like, my only real exposure to any stuff like this was like, honestly, probably movies. Like, I just wouldn't be able to actually translate what that actually meant into like an everyday situation or a, or a career. Yeah. Um, so literally, like, was a complete noob. <laughs> yeah, again, I think very relatable because you, if you're what they call conscious, unconsciously incompetent, then you don't know what you don't know. So where do you even start? So I guess that's where my where my next question is going. Like, how did you figure out where to start if you didn't really know what the building blocks were, but mm. you kind of knew you wanted to do this visual thing? Then how did you kind of decide where to start learning? Well, it kind of happened, the decision was kind of made for me, actually, which was a great one 
have made for me. Um, it all happened because I was chatting, I was working in a co-working space at the time when I was freelancing as a copywriter. And uh, I had gotten to know uh, one of the programmers who also worked there. And I always thought, you know, what they did was really cool and they were super friendly. Anyone who's worked in a co-working space will know, I'm sure, that they're great places to like meet people and learn some stuff about other careers. Um, so I kind of just mentioned to her in passing one day, I was like, oh, that's really cool. God, I'd love to be able to do something like that. And then threw that thought away and was never even going to consider doing anything about it because I just didn't think it was a possibility. Um, and then she mentioned Code Bar to me, which um, maybe some people here know. It's an organization um, where that runs free workshops for anyone who wants to learn to code, for anyone who's underrepresented in tech. Um, and so she mentioned this, um, this event to me. And she was like, yeah, it's totally free. It's just a little workshop you can go to and um, you get paired up with a coach and a coach will help you learn how to code. So obviously initially I was like, absolutely not because I'm terrified. <laughs> um, uh, but she explained to me that this group was specifically for people who were new and you could totally go without having known anything to do with code, which is exactly the position I was in. So I was like, Feck it, I'll go along after work. It was literally across the road from my office. So I was like, sure, what, what do I have to lose? Um, and so I went and I didn't realize that at the time, but I definitely had some sort of image of what like the tech world was going to be and what the what kind of people were going to be there. And I walked in and everyone was like really friendly, super open, super welcoming, um, and just really enthusiastic to have someone new there who, who was just trying out something new which immediately put me at ease because I was really nervous and really terrified that everyone was going to be like, who even are you? Get out of here. Um, so, so that was great. And then I got paired up with someone who told me what a text editor was, uh, told me how to download one and basically explained to me a bit about HTML. Um, so it was really nice to have that guidance at the start because as I'm sure lots of people can understand you, when there's so much, so many directions to go in, it can be really overwhelming. And I definitely was overwhelmed at the start, but just having that kind of direction and that network of support really helped. Just deciding like, you know, I remember sitting there looking at the screen being like, but which text editor is the best one? How do I even know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, totally. I remember it so vividly. So, so yeah, it was really good to have all those decisions, um, not made for me, but just to have the support and guidance there to actually, you know, point you in the right direction when you're pretty clueless. <laughs> Yeah, and um, Code Bar actually is international, isn't it? Yeah, they have chapters all over the world. So they have one in London, obviously. Um, they have a, a, all across Europe. They have ones in America. Um, and they have virtual ones as well, which I'm sure are coming in pretty handy right now. Yeah, yeah. And what I really like about Code Bar as well is that they are really, uh, they're really um, intentional about knowing who's new as well. So I think they've got a little paw print in their system, haven't they? So when you turn up and you're new, there's a little paw print there and they're like, oh, you're new. So we need to give you like the drill of where's the food and how do you get paired up and all of that. So they really like look after you because like you say, it's really scary walking in and thinking this yeah. is a totally new world. And I think totally. like, even when I went on my boot camp, I walked in and I'm like, oh, okay. There's a lot of young men with really tight jeans on and beards here. Like, <laughs> I'm not used to this at all. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just a totally different. So can you tell me a bit about like your learning routine, like how you organized when you were going to like practice your coding? Because obviously you're going to code bar during the week on some weeknights, but like just fitting it in around your work and stuff like, were you still working full time? Yeah, so I was still working full time. Um, I was uh, doing copywriting and copy editing uh, as a normal nine to five, basically in this co-working space, uh, immediately was hooked on going to code bar. So I went every Wednesday, I think for like uh, three months or so every Wednesday I could anyway. Um, and that was more, I think this, having the social aspect to it definitely helped nurture it at the beginning. I think if I didn't have something like that at the very start, it could have been a different story maybe. Um, so that was really good in just giving yourself that inspiration you need every week because I'm sure as everyone knows, you know, that you're not always in the mood. You don't always have the energy to to start and learn some things so massive. Um, so what I would normally do would work during the day, go home, have dinner, and then try not to put too much pressure on myself in the evenings and just follow a tutorial. And I'll say, I'll sit down, I'll try five, 10 minutes. And if I hate it, I just won't do it. Like, it's not a big deal. Um, 
but of course almost every time I did I really enjoyed it and it was more fun than than a, a chore you know I always find when I try to pick up something new in my I automatically think of it as a chore or like a task that I need to take off my list whereas with coding it was just so fun like every time you did something and saw a result you just get a rush so doing it pretty much after work not every single evening I know a lot of people do that but I did not um, I'd say maybe like three or four evenings max out of the week and then usually maybe on a Saturday morning I'd like to sit down with my cup of tea and try and like make a div or something do you know what I mean? <laughs> Cool. Okay. You know, it's, I think it's, it's really important to note that if you're really struggling with something, then don't push yourself because it can be counterproductive, can't it? Yeah. I, I felt like for me, there was definitely, it felt like a lot of people were doing that and were kind of saying you had to do that. And if you didn't do that, then get out of here type of thing. Um, but yeah, for me, I think to, in order to actually keep it sustainable, especially at the beginning, like you have to just give yourself a break because you're soaking up so much information and you're just using so many new parts of your brain that you never used before that you just have to look after yourself as well. Um, so yeah, I think a couple of times a week after work is, is totally fine so long as you can sustain it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So what skills did you realize were important for, for this whole coding, new world of coding that you were getting into? I mean, problem solving <laughs> is the main one, isn't it? Because you're yeah. basically just doing puzzles all day. Um, uh, I think the one thing I really found out about myself doing it was that I really, really love a challenge. And I know that's the kind of thing that you often would say in an interview just to sound like big yourself up or something. But if you enjoy actually like really getting to the nitty gritty and just being really stubborn with a problem, trying to actually figure it out, basically like if you're competitive, I find I'm that competitive with code because I'm like, I will figure you out. You will be mine. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so enjoying a bit of competition and like figuring stuff out, I think was really, really key to actually sustaining it. Um, and also just not letting it like get on top of you. Like if you can't figure something out, sometimes it'll take you five minutes. The next time you do a similar problem, it could take you days or weeks, who knows, right? But I think having a bit of patience and compassion for yourself in this kind of situations was pretty uh, effective for me, at least, uh, in actually being able to like see through all of that bullshit, essentially, and just like figure out the problem at hand without letting it get too stressful, you know? Yeah, compassion, self-compassion is definitely really important generally, but especially when you are trying to learn something new. Um, and also, like you say, remembering that this too shall pass. Like it's never going to be a mystery forever, is it? At some point. Oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah, I remember like going to Code Bar and so many like experienced developers were telling me that like it was going to be okay, and I was like, "You don't know that." <laughs> yeah, how can you know that? <laughs> yeah, it's like you've never been in my position. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, was there anything that surprised you about learning to code? Oh yeah, that it was fun and also okay. creative. Actually, like I used to think of um, people in tech as just being so not like me. Like I could just never branch over into that realm. But um, code is super creative. Like if you have a problem, it's not like there are just two or three ways to solve it. You can literally create any way you want to solve any problem in like an infinite amount of ways, and it's super fun. Um, so yeah, be, it, it being so creative was definitely something I'd never expected. It's one of my favorite parts of that as well. Yeah, that's interesting. And also, like, if you really, really want to go wild with it, you can solve that same problem in loads of different languages if you really want to. <laughs> totally. Like, you literally can do whatever you want. You know, there are no rules. Well, there are rules. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but, uh, like, it's not as strict as I was expecting it to be. You know, you kind of think of it as like there's A, B and C and you could do it in this set of ways and it's either correct or it's wrong. But it's so much more nuanced than that. And then those experienced folks show you how to do it in one line and you're like, well, yeah. No. yeah, you're like, what? <laughs> cool. OK, so that's how you kind of discovered coding. Now we're going to break it up a bit with a quick fire round. Oh my god, I love those cards. <laughs> it's like a game show. I tried to, like, you know what? Like, it's really low budget here, and I've got my on air sign. I made I love it. Lockdown crafts. But yeah, if anyone felt that they wanted to tweet at us, please do. 
please do <laughs> i'd be very happy if you did that so uh, yeah you ready for this quick fire round Neve? let's do it just say whatever your gut tells you right don't okay <laughs> okay right. ready i think so cats or dogs both okay country you'd love to visit uh 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 fiji oh okay favorite meetup <laughs> ladies of code <laughs> yes correct answer <laughs> early bird or night owl oh early bird definitely okay marmite love or hate hate okay good favorite app pocket yes that is a yeah. good one but for me it's replaced my bookmark so now i've just got shed loads of stuff in pocket i'm not going to read <laughs> rather than in my bookmarks in my yeah. it also eats up a lot of, when you like pocket 25 articles a day and never read them it then ends up eating into your your uh, storage space <laughs> yes uh okay coding as a hobby yes or no uh, do i have to just say yes or no no i think i, just... I think yes but it's okay if no. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for you, do you code as a hobby? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Boys own or Westlife? Boys own, obviously. <laughs> just checking, just checking. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Yarn or NPM? NPM. Yarn or wool? Wool. React hooks or crochet hooks? React hooks. Tabs or spaces? Tabs. Is the right answer. Apple or Blackberry? Apple. Blackberry, what? <laughs> I don't know who wrote these. <laughs> Blackberry or Raspberry Pi? Oh, Raspberry Pi. I've never done it, but it's on my list. Oh, you have to. We've got a couple yeah. of folks in our Get On With It group who are playing with Raspberry Pi. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Sounds so fun. Yeah. North London or South London? South. Is the right answer. Oh, yes. I was getting ready to make a public apology there. <laughs> a product you wish existed. Oh, God. A product I wish existed. Um, um, I don't know. Okay. Just thought there might be something on the, the front of your brain. You're like, I'm going to invent that soon when I get some time. Lockdown invention. I mean, I do have ideas, but they all exist in the world already. <laughs> Probably all the ideas exist in the world. We want to get deep about it. There are no new ideas, really, are there? Okay, well, this is a kind of sentimental answer, but uh, I had one of the first apps that I tried to build was a little plant app that I thought would be quite cool just to, like, you know that you could essentially say i watered my plant on this day and that was like the first level of coding where you'd be like yes i made this thing but it's so expandable right because you could even get like with the raspberry pies or with and, like you could branch it out so much where you could like you know have it feed like the moisture levels of the, so of the soil into your phone and you could like have it set reminders for you and you could just like expand it so much so yeah the plant up then <laughs> oh, yeah well i haven't seen one I'm sure those people would love that. So yeah, we had a couple of uh, comments in the uh, in the chat. So yeah, South Totes, yeah, Lorraine, well done, good South. Barry <laughs> wants a robot that can cook and clean, and that's cheap. Oh yeah, I would love that. And Bavna says you can use the Raspberry Pi to check humidity. <sighs> totally. So why don't you yeah, try and hook that up and see what happens? Yeah, I'm gonna need someone to teach me some Raspberry Pi skills. <laughs> yeah, no, we can arrange that. It'd be cool. All right, so thanks for, thanks for humoring me there. Right, we're going to move on to the next section about how you got confident and how you got paid to do coding. So we've talked about how you taught yourself and how you got taught and, you know, where you started and stuff. So what was the point where you can remember things falling into place? Was there like a eureka moment for you? Or maybe there were a few. Yeah, it's an interesting question, I think, with code because one of the things that I really love about it is that, you know, for five minutes i'll be like i am a genius like oh, i just figured out this thing and it's the best thing in the world and then you're walking around like you're a superhero and you're like i'm amazing like bill gates gonna call me now any second and then five minutes later you're like oh my god it broke i can't do it it's too much and then you're like i hate myself what am i doing this is a terrible decision blah 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 um 
So I actually really enjoy that like roller coaster of emotions that comes along with coding because it just keeps it entertaining, I think. Um, so there wasn't any particular eureka moment. I think the great thing about coding is that it kind of feeds into you as little breadcrumbs as you go along. So like, you know, the second that you can figure out how like, I don't know, a breakpoint, how you can manipulate a breakpoint or something, that's like so rewarding in itself that it just like floods your brain full of endorphins and you're like, yes, this is amazing and I actually get it. And then you move on to the next thing and then you struggle for a while and you think, what am I doing, what am I doing? And then you have that same eureka moment again. Um, and I think that's kind of ties into as well with the confidence question because it's not like a constant thing for me anyway. It's more like, yeah, I feel confident now with this particular thing because I've got it. Now I'll learn something else and just have another like little swoop. It comes, it'll probably take a dip at some point when you're not understanding what, how something works. Um, but the more you do it, the more you kind of understand like, yeah, it might suck now and I don't get it. But like that'll just make the reward all the more, all the more um, amazing when you actually do get it. And you always will get it. Like now I sound like one of the coaches at Code Bar that was telling me that I would get it. But it's true. Like you will get it, you know. <laughs> it's like, but when? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Now>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it is totally about when you're when you're in a bit of a dip and you, you don't know how to, to continue, just kind of trying to remember that you have done something like this before and you've managed yeah. to overcome it and you've managed to understand it. And just kind of, like you say, being compassionate to yourself and looking back and looking at the bigger picture of I'm much further forward than I was when I started. There's so oh, much totally. more things I know now. So, yeah, you definitely have to do that. So last time I saw you in the flesh, we both spoke at um, an event and you spoke about um, how to make the transition from HTML and CSS to introducing JavaScript into the mix, didn't you? Um, so did. what point, just to let everyone know, what point did you feel ready to introduce JavaScript into the mix? Well, okay, so I had been going to Code Bar for a couple of months at this stage. I had learned my HTML and I had learned my CSS. Um, and I had made essentially like a static page that was just like a portfolio website and it looked really cool. And I was like, I'm amazing. I got this like genius. And then I was like, okay, I'll go and do some JavaScript. So, and I only said JavaScript because it was like the next in the list of tutorials to do. So I was like, I have no idea. I'll just pick this and go for it. So I went along to a code bar workshop. I got paired up with a coach and I was there like opening up my laptop, like, you know, buzzing, ready to go. And my coach was like, Neve, uh, I actually just want to tell you that, you know, JavaScript is going to be different. You're not going to get it. It's going to be really hard. You're going to feel like you don't understand what's going on. Uh, so I just want to like prep you for that. And I was like, bitch, I just made a website with HTML and CSS. Like I got this. And then I like literally got like two paragraphs in and I was like, what? Like it was just such a different level of coding like a completely different world and that was when again my confidence was like woo 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 and then psh, what is this i have no idea so i definitely got like a reality check that day <laughs> html and css very different to something like javascript um so yeah i mean you, i felt ready absolutely wasn't it's like that thing you said where you know um if you're the more ignorant you are the less the more confident you are um, and that was definitely me. And I think it's, you know, it's healthy to have a bit of that sometimes because if you do, if you're too cautious all the time, you might not throw yourself into something with as much freedom, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I definitely felt confident and quickly realized that I had no reason to be whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, and like you say, um, it was so different from HTML and CSS that how could you have been ready anyway? Uh, there's probably not a lot you could have done to make yourself ready. No. <sighs> And actually, looking back, I think it was a bit of a blessing that I was so ignorant about the the learning curve there, because, you know, if you don't know, you're going to you're not going to psych yourself up about it. You're not going to get too in your head um, and you're less. I mean, I think it's kind of a dodgy thing to say, maybe, but I think if you're less invested in it and you think of it more as a kind of, you know, flimsy thing, then you don't um, get too caught up in it and you don't let it kind of overwhelm you as much. So I think it's good to have a bit of a balance, right? And I don't think you're ever, well, for me anyway, I don't think you'll ever reach a point where you'll be like, I am ready for this now and have it actually be the case. Like, it's just the way it is. Yeah. 
So somebody's asked about resources. So other than the code bar tutorials, because on the code bar website, they do have their own tutorials, don't they? Which you yeah. can work through with your coach or you can bring something to them and get them to, to coach you through that. So were there any other resources that you found handy when you were learning? Yeah, totally. Um, so the code bar tutorials were the first ones that I kind of latched on to and they were great because uh, they were designed specifically for beginners. Um, and Free Code Camp, I know, is a super well-known one. And that one really, really helped me. And they do it in a way that it's just so broken down into tiny little exercises. So it's, like, really digestible, especially as a beginner. I remember, like, one of my first weeks of coding doing, like, trying to, like, change a picture of a cat to, like, be on the left. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Free Code Camp uh, tutorials are great as well. Uh, MDN docs, of course, um, have just great explanations of any problem you're trying to wrap your head around. And again, it's just really set up in a very digestible, digestible way. Um, CSS Tricks, great website for learning about CSS. On that note, um, CSS Diner is a great game on GitHub. I don't know if anyone knows it already, but it's essentially um, a game that someone has developed to help you get to grips with your CSS selectors. And they basically just have like bits of food on the screen and you're supposed to use your selectors to actually get the food on the plate. Um, and I loved that one and that really helped me get to grips with all the selectors you need. Uh, what else? Flexbox Froggy is another great game for learning CSS, Flexbox. Um, Grid by Example is also, I'm on the CSS train now, but Grid by Example is a great website by uh, Rachel Andrew, um, who is a really cool coder and that just helps you learn all you need to know about the CSS grid layout, which I found really helpful as well. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, there's also a site called Catalog, Catalog Rocks, I think it's called, um, where they basically have what essentially are um, like mock um, code tests that you would take home from an interview, say, um, and you can kind of practice your skills there, uh, which is really cool. And there's also another one, getting into JavaScript now, uh, Eloquent JavaScript is a really cool online book, essentially. Um, that I found super helpful at the beginning because it starts off not even with the code, but it kind of just starts off with giving a background of like what the hell JavaScript actually is and like where it lies in the context of like the history of the web. Um, and sometimes, you know, you'd be tempted to kind of skip it a bit, but it just is really nice, kind of like even novelistic, I would say, entry into JavaScript just to really kind of give you a bit of context. It's awesome. Uh, there's also another app that I, uh, that I played around with when I was learning JavaScript called Grasshopper. And I think it might even be for kids, but I loved it and it really helped me. So it's essentially just like a little app that you can download and it's like games uh, for you to uh, learn and practice your JavaScript skills. Um, so yeah, I could go on. There's loads. No, that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the fun ones are probably the best ones. And like the kiddie ones are good too because they're going to yeah. be basic, aren't they? So if you don't know totally. how to do any of it, then just start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, okay, so... So you brought JavaScript into the mix, you mastered that, or you got better at it. How did you know, or when did you know you were ready to get paid to code? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, so as you say, you know, I kind of came into it in a really like backdoor kind of way, because I was working with the, I was in this co-working space, and you know, as I was learning to code more and more, obviously I was kind of chatting to the developers in the, co in the co-working space, more as well and I was the kind of person where I was just so excited about learning everything like I was so excited that I like you know rotated a shape this way that I would literally like stop everything and show everyone even if they didn't want to be shown um, which was you know really fun for me probably maybe annoying for some people but it also actually helped people see my progress particularly like developers who ended up hiring me um, and even though the code was 100% crappy at the time. I thought it was amazing, but it was surely crappy. Um, I think what is tried and tested, or what, is, what I've learned in my experience anyway, is that people just care more about your attitude towards it than your actual results. So if you're happy problem solving and you're happy just figuring stuff out, um, and if it gives you a buzz, I think that's what really makes you attractive to people who are hiring. Um, so I didn't really know that I was ready to... Um, like get paid to do it. How it happened was that I was showing one of the developers some app I made or something like that. And uh, he said to me like, oh, you know what? We actually might have a bit of uh, work just as a small like side project, you know, freelance thing if you'd be up for it. 
So my initial reaction was just to say, uh, yes, absolutely, I could do it, and then just like Google it later, which is essentially what I did. Um, uh, but he was really nice because he knew how new I was. Uh, he uh, basically set up a few uh, like small projects for me to do, which was started off with like something as simple as like just writing out some HTML templates to fit into like a WordPress project or something like that, and eventually kind of built up from there. So it was really handy and a great way to start it because. Well, one, you're not committing to like a year long job in a language that you don't even know if it's going to suit you, if you're going to enjoy. Um, and two, it's just a really nice kind of iterative way to actually start to like lean into the professional world of coding, I guess, um, without setting your expectations too high or without getting like, you know, into a big contract that you can't get out of later or something like that, you know? So I think it's just good to kind of like do it in a step by step basis and then gradually kind of build up the confidence to say, yeah, I should be paid for this. That's how it worked with me. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind then, because um, I think when you got your first, you were just about to start your first job or you were in your first week when I first met you. So that's when you did that talk at Code Bar last year about how to learn, how to learn. Oh, uh, yeah. And then when I saw you the second time, I think you were just going into your second role in September-ish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. So next time you meet me, you'll be getting your third role. But so when you, <laughs> when you went to get your second role, what did you look for? What were you... You know, what are you thinking, right, I'm now going to get my next job. What am I, what do I want? Well, it wasn't as um, as luxurious as that for me. So I was working with this small company, a um, great company called Optifin, and they they do, like, a lot of um, websites and stuff for, like, charities and arts organizations. Um, and they were an agency as well. And they essentially just got to a point where, actually, they just didn't get a few pitches, and they had to, like, let go of some of their freelance stuff. It was a super small company anyway. There was only, like, five of us or something. Um, so I actually was told that there was just no work for me. So I was like, oh, okay, better go find a job then. Um, and I um, just knew that I really enjoyed the front end stuff. And mostly, I think half of that is like, I really enjoyed it, but also I knew I hadn't a clue about any back end stuff. I still like don't really know that much about back end. Um, but I, all I knew was that I wanted to do front end because I needed that visual cue to help me kind of figure out what I was doing. Um, and I really enjoy like design and art and stuff like that. I thought it'd be cool to like, do some like transitions and animations and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I knew I wanted to do. Um, and I knew when I was looking for companies to try and work for, I wanted to make sure that the company like, did genuinely support newbies um, because a lot of companies I'm sure I'm sure everybody's been fed the line and no matter what industry is that like oh yeah we'll just take you on uh, for really low pay you're a junior it'll be good exposure and experience blah, blah, blah. Um, you know some of which is true but also I want to make sure that I was targeting companies that um, you know had tangible ties to like supporting uh, underrepresented people like and also uh, juniors so I remember looking at the Code Bar website actually and looking at their, their sponsors um, because they would be the ones to like host the events and stuff. So they would obviously like, on one hand, you know, it's kind of strategic, I guess. On one hand, like you might even know people, you might have even met them. Um, and you also know for a fact that they know Code Bar. So there's immediately that kind of like slight step in the door of these people. Yeah. Um, which was great, which is what I did. And I ended up um, uh, getting a, a job offer out of that, which was which was great. Cool. Good. Um, I think we're going to go to another quick fire Ooh. round. We are, we've only got a few minutes left and I want to get through all these questions. So I'm going to give you another quick fire round. So Mac or PC? Mac. Yes. <laughs> Favorite country you've been to so far? Favorite country I've been to so far? Uh... England? <laughs> um i'm gonna say uh i really like uh spain okay sequel or no sequel i'm gonna say sequel but i i've had terrible terrible experiences with it <laughs> okay sequel or prequel prequel <laughs> like when you've got a set of films and they've got the sequel and then they've got the prequel oh. <laughs> I love it I'll go prequel all the way okay favorite analog product 
Favorite analog product? Um, Tamagotchis. Is that another one? Yeah. Mouse or trackpad? Nice. Burrito or pizza? Oh. Burrito or pizza? Pizza. Can you hear me? Yeah. Froyo or ice cream sandwich? I mean, thrown with the sandwich, but ice cream sandwich. You're waking up a bit here. Kit Kat or Oreo? Oreo. Text editor of choice? Uh, VS Code. Yep. Lockdown or Markdown? Uh, Markdown. <laughs> TypeScript or JavaScript? JavaScript. Typeform or Google Form? Uh, Google form. <laughs> West London or East London? East. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, South London, you're half right. Best advice you've been given? Uh, enjoy it. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to have a quick look through the, the questions that we were given in the chat and pick out a few of these. How did you communicate your self-taught experience on your CV? How did I communicate my experience? Um, self-taught experience on your CV. Uh, I, it's quite funny when you change careers and you're like all of a sudden in a new industry, I have nothing to fill up this page with. <laughs> um, I, I'm a top very put like self-taught developer. Um, and I also, so I had like my little projects that I had uh, done with this one small company. Um, and I listed like, you know, HTML, CSS, any other kind of text stuff that we'd used. Um, and I also listed a lot of the meetups and the communities that I was part of, uh, which I think is a really important thing to, to do, not only because it shows you're enthusiastic, but it shows that you actually like care, that you might have connections with people in the, in the, in the communities. Um, and I also listed like any talks that I had done. And I think I listed even like resources. I was basically just listing any tangible thing that I could show somebody to say, look, proof, I actually like do code and I have learned using these resources. So basically anything and everything I could put on there, I put on there. <laughs> cool. So did you have a portfolio, like an online portfolio or anything? And do you think that's important? Um, I did it. Well, no, that's a lie. I did. I mean, I had worked on a couple of websites that had gone live. Um, and like, of course, I had only worked on like a very small section of them. Um, but I listed them nonetheless, because I did work on them. Uh, but I think when I was applying for my second job, I think I only had maybe like two or three. Um, so I do think and I think I even had like some of my personal projects on there as well, actually. Um, so I think for me, that was kind of my portfolio, but I think the word portfolio can kind of mean anything. Like it doesn't have to mean like a literal PDF presentation of a bunch of websites and apps that you built. Just anything tangible that shows that you um, are coding. I think anything measurable is always great to see. Yeah. And like you say, just showing that you're aware of where to find things out and where to get those learning resources as well shows that you've actually bothered to do the research and you are quite serious. You're not just saying, I've taught myself to code. They can see from the range of stuff that you've looked at that you're serious. Yeah, well, totally. And I know now, at least anyway, like learning it, like looking up how to solve problems and, you know, finding out where the answers are and finding out how to debug problem is something that you'll do pretty much every day as a developer. So just showing someone that you are already kind of in that mindset, I think goes a long way. Yeah. So how does your current company support you with further training and development? My current company is awesome. Um, they are a small enough uh, organization. There's like 12, 14 full-time staff and they probably have about the same, if not a bit more freelancers as well. Um, and when I joined, um, I was kind of brought under the wing of an awesome developer uh, who was also my mentor, Caroline is her name. Um, and she was super supportive of like, of just, how new I was and of course when I showed up on my first day I was like super nervous of course um wondering if like I actually deserved to be there um but having a mentor who was just super patient 
super empathetic. Like she had gone through much of the same stuff herself, even though she went through a degree, um, she got it, you know, and just having a mentor at the very beginning meant loads. And they also have, um, they also gave me a learning budget, which I think they give to everyone in the company. Um, so, you know, I immediately got uh, access to a, a, an online course with JavaScript and a subscription to Egghead, which is another great resource. Um, you do have to pay for it, but, you know, companies will often pay for it. Uh, where they just have like video tutorials on all sorts of um, coding subjects like that. And there's also really cool things like um, we have Code Club in work where we all get together after work and work on our own side projects together. And they also have Tech Club where all of the engineering staff will just meet up for uh, one hour a week to just talk about any cool tech stuff that they did that they found out about that week or maybe a cool project that they're working on, which I think is just as important as like you know, providing you with like a mentor is just actually being able to bounce around um, with your peers about like anything that you like in tech, which is really, really cool. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So then you don't feel because somebody might ask a question, you think, oh, they're asking that question. I was wondering the same thing and they've got loads of experience. So, yeah, it definitely mm. kind of helps you to kind of ground yourself a bit, I guess. So looking back on your journey, are there any things that you that you now realize you spent a lot too much time on um that you would have been better off moving on from um too much time on no i don't think so i mean i'll never i feel like <laughs> when i started off i was wondering like if i was going into um like when i would have that moment of like oh i get javascript now you know like with html and css it was like okay i understand this now whereas with javascript i'm like when will I get this? And people are like, it'll take about 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's a fact, if it's a case of like spending too much time on something or more just like, I don't know, setting your expectations with how like time works in comparison with code, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I guess you can learn quicker now than people could 10 years ago, I guess. Yeah, totally. Yeah. More resources and there's different ways of learning. You don't just have to go to a book and learn it. Um, yeah, totally. Like you don't have to spend an entire, you know, summer reading a book about a particular function. You can just Google the bits you need and then take that and add that to your to your knowledge bank. Yeah. Okay. So last couple of questions then. So um, within your team, what sort of backgrounds do the other folks come from? Have you got like a good mix of like degrees, boot camp, self taught? I don't know, to learn on the job? Um, I think most of them actually did go through CS degrees. Oh, okay. And if they see this and somebody's going to tell me that I'm wrong, of course. <laughs> um, I'm really but excited I don't... about this though because they tweeted about it twice. So... I know, they're so sweet. They're really, really excited. And they also were like, will it be recorded? Can we see? You know? Oh. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, but yeah, I think most of them did do computer science degrees and one of the founders, I'm going to get this wrong, but I think uh, one of them at least is self-taught as well. Um, okay. So it's nice. I mean, and it's kind of a thing that like, it's so funny, like my mentor once said to me that um, I think I was saying something that I was envious that she had done a CS degree because she just like had all this knowledge and she was saying, well, actually, I'm a bit envious of you because like nowadays you don't need a CS degree. You know, I feel like I could have done something more fun and then just learned this on the side, which is equally, equally true, you know. So I don't think there, there's a kind of common understanding, at least in where I work, or an attitude that isn't like you have to have done a CS degree or even a boot camp. It's just like you, so long as you can teach yourself and can learn um, and are open to it, then that's all you need, I think. Yeah, and I think as well, like if you've taught yourself or you've come through a boot camp, um, then you've shown that A, you can learn and B, you know, if you've come through a boot camp or you've taught yourself in a few months, that you can learn quickly. So yep. if they're taking you on, they don't have to spend two years getting you to the point where they want you to be. They can get you there quickly. So um, yeah. it's a gamble anytime you hire somebody. Like I've hired loads of people and there's always been a gamble part. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if somebody's proven that they're motivated and they can demonstrate what they've learned that really helps and i think that being said companies vary as to how they treat their junior staff i think sometimes they do expect a bit too much um 
yeah or, you know if a lot of them have got degrees they don't understand why people don't know this thing about like the historical reason why this is oh yeah totally i mean i've definitely met people like in either one of my jobs or even at a meetup where people are like you don't know this thing and you're like yeah. no of course i don't why would i <laughs> i literally why? just started this why didn't you explain it to me <laughs> yeah yeah totally and i think that's actually one of the most kind of liberating things um when learning to code is to just be able to be like because normally you know you might be a bit embarrassed that you don't know something or you don't want to ask a stupid question but actually just owning it at the very beginning is like super liberating and usually half the time half the other people in the room will have the same or similar question um so once you can kind of just ask those questions that you think are silly questions you end up learning so much more and maybe even oftentimes like exposing somebody else's uh, ignorance that was disguised as something else <laughs> yeah yeah totally so we've got a couple of minutes left is there any other last piece of advice or any last thoughts you want to leave people with who might be somewhere along that whole journey that you found yourself on i mean at the risk of <laughs> repeating myself i want to say like just stick with it it will be hard at times of course and like it's going to be super rewarding at other times but if you just like give yourself a break and just keep going you will get there like it's not this obscure thing that like only a few people will ever get like it's totally achievable you just have to like be kind to yourself and stick with it you'll totally get there cool thanks neve thanks so much for joining us tonight thank you for having me this was fun i'm glad i'm glad you thought it was fun i was like how's she gonna react to this quick fire stuff i um, love the quick fire stuff it was great good. <laughs> i've never seen that before in a webinar so i think i'm gonna do that again yeah fun cool okay so what we're gonna do just before everyone goes we're gonna try the group photo again because we did have a little bit of a um a technical issue before so anyone who wants to be in the group photo please switch your camera on and we will do the eld screen grab again so <laughs> ready <laughs> i got the sound switched on my camera <laughs> cool. thanks everybody for joining us tonight um like i said we're always looking for more people to talk about how they got into the tech role that they're in um, if you want to do that, please reach out to me or Sarah. Feel free to put something in the chat here or via meetup.com. Our next event is Get On With It tomorrow. You'll find the details of that on meetup.com. But yeah, keep an eye on that. Make sure your emails are switched on and then you will always get a notification when we release a new event. But for now, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>